We are starting on the back side where it says graph aggregate demand, short run aggregate supply, and let a long run aggregate supply at equilibrium. So I'm gonna do this with y'all because I know we just did this. So it wants us to graph everything at equilibrium. This is price level. This real is real GDP. GDP. Okay. My short run aggregate supply curve will slope upward. And my aggregate demand curve will slope downward. Hey, Ms. Redeem. Yes. I didn't get that. Oh, never mind. Okay. I know where this equilibrium point is, is where my price level is going to lead to my output, which output is Y. And where this intersects, where the short run aggregate supply and the aggregate demand curve intersect, this will become my long run aggregate supply. I just, you could use those pencils. I just, I just had a highlighter for myself. There's, if y'all want colors, there's colors there. Okay, so we'll, okay, so will we list the intersection as Y or as RGDP1? Um, what you will do, this is the equilibrium. You would just put E. Oh. I yeah, know. but like for the for the x axis, where the x axis and it's real GDP. Y. Yeah, I just put y. y. I just put y. Like if we if we were gonna move this, like y one, and then I would have my next one. Or you could put long run aggregate supply. Either of those are applicable. Okay. Okay. Y'all know that that's what it means, AD yes. curve, because, if I abbreviate because, y'all know that's because, yes. okay, I'm just checking, because of changes in physical capital, which we talked about yesterday, wealth, and fiscal and monetary policy. negative and a positive demand shock. I'm going to put everything at equilibrium first. Okay? So I'm going to do my short run aggregate supply. Do my aggregate demand. This is my equilibrium. I know where my aggregate demand and my short run aggregate supply curve intersect, what am I gonna get? I'm gonna get my long run aggregate supply. So I want a negative demand shock. Which way would my curve go? To the left, people lose money, right? Their incomes are cut in half. That would cause this curve, and I'm just gonna change the curve just for myself. This is AD2. So now I'm gonna get a new price level. Price level has gone what? Down. Down. What has happened to output? Down. Output. 
output went down. So price level went down, output went down. She's not in today. The last name's Meeks, too, right? She's not in today. Okay. Okay. So, right now, we're going to see this new, do y'all see this little space right here? Okay. That tells me, what are we in? Are we in a recession? Are we in an expansion? Recession. We're in a recession. Okay, the bigger this little triangle is, what is that going to tell me about the recession? It's a bigger, it's warped, right? If it's small, is it that bad of a recession? No. no. So would this look like the Great Depression? No. No, the Great Depression would have that aggregate demand way out here, and this, this little chunk would be really big, okay? So this, what it's called, this little area that I have in orange, this is called a recessionary gap. The bigger the gap, the severer the recession. The smaller the gap, the not so severe the recession. So, so we will always have a recessionary gap because aggregate demand is always ideal. Huh? So what would always have a recessionary gap because the equilibrium is always that, ideal? Yes, and so when we were in the long run, here was it because of sticky wages, nominal, all that other stuff, and then things occur, and now we have our aggregate demand curve move. That's where it will tell us what phase of the business cycle. And this is why we say that the economists, our government, waits to react to it because they're like, oh, that's not bad, right? So should I react right now? No, but then this gets bigger, and what do they do? They react, okay? And so that's why it takes time for our policy to be implemented. Okay, so now let's look at the next one, a positive one. I'm going to put everything at equilibrium again. So here's price level. Here's real GDP. I just want to have clarity when I do. So now that I've, I have equilibrium, what do I need to do? <laughs> well, well, wait, no. Uh, well, I need long run, run aggregate supply. supply. Yeah. And then I move my aggregate demand curve to the what? To the right. Just serendipitous that I have to send the colors out. What? Serendipitous, like, I, they were doing maps in the other class. Did someone lose their Bands of America, Waxahachie High School pin? Collector's item. It's probably one of those mine. It is? Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. I, oh, I, I don't want to cross in front of it. Okay, it's right up there. Okay. Okay, so now, do y'all see the expansionary gap? What has happened to price level? Price level has what? Increase. Increase. The output has increase. increase. This is going to be an example of an expansion. Um, there's two times in history that we could look at this in 1920s and the 1950s. Those are both great times. Great time periods, and this is an expansionary. Thank you. 
exam, all of this stuff needs to be graphed, okay? You can't, you need to show the movement, because that's your analysis. You would just point the expansionary, yeah. You don't, because what happens is they scan all of that stuff in, and you can't color. It's, you're only allowed to pencil. Okay, can I flip over now? Y'all get what I'm saying when I do S R A S. Short run aggregate supply curve. When there is a change in a commodity, price nominal. Do y'all remember what nominal wages are? Yeah. Yes, it's what the price is at this moment with inflation, right? Have those nominal wages adjusted? No. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to graph a supply shock, first a negative one. So here's our price level. real GDP, and I'm going to put everything at what first? Equilibrium. Equilibrium. Shock, which way would that go? Left, Left, but what do I need to do first before I even do that? Long run. Bless you. Okay, so a negative one would take it which way? To the? So do y'all see what type of gap is this? Recessionary. Recessionary. So, um, like this happened in the 1970s. Do y'all know what commodity was short? Oil. oil. So this is an example of what happened in the oil embargo in the 1970s. And so with that shortage, prices went up, right? But then output went down. And both of this, if output goes down, what happens to people's jobs? They, it goes down as well. So we have higher unemployment. And what do we call that when you have high inflation and high unemployment? This is the graph for stagflation. 
This is exactly what happened in the 1970s. So this is the stagflation graph. This shows me high unemployment. Again, if that recessionary, it, it was really big in the 70s. So did the presidents have to react? They tried to. And they tried to put price caps on gasoline, and that did not work. Didn't they also, like, try doing something in miles per hour? Oh, yeah, with the speed limit, 55. Yeah, and they had, like, the opposite effect. Yes, because cars are more fuel efficient when running at higher levels. Okay, um, positive supply shock. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing, graph everything at equilibrium. Are y'all getting this now? Mm -hmm. right, it, it's clarity. Do y'all have beautiful notes? of the business cycle am I in? Look at this. I'm in an expansion, but this is a very good expansion because what is still low? This is a nice expansion. Oh, nice expansion. No. Um, there's no term for this, but this is ideally what we like to see in an expansion. Okay? Where our economy is growing, but prices are not going up, right? And so there are times that this happens, and it's usually with the introduction of a new technology. So I could look at 2000 and the creation of the internet. It would have this. I could look at Henry Ford and the moving assembly line. This is the impact right there. Okay? So I'm just going to put an example, the creation of the internet. Would that be the dot-com boom? The boom, okay. and then the bust would have us coming back to this. Okay. So, do I need to do a recessionary gap for y'all again to show you how it is? Do y'all know which graph it is? This one right here, right? All right. This one, an inflationary gap. This was a good expansion, right? With a bad inflationary gap, it's going to deal with the aggregate demand curve, right? Okay, I'm going to just draw this one really quick, and then we'll be done with our notes. I think we had it on the other side. show an inflationary gap. Which way will my aggregate demand curve have to go? 
to the left, that's a recession. It right. needs to go right. to the, oh, I heard the right. Wow. right. Wow. And so this right here, my friends, is an inflationary gap. Can you have both of them move? move in either direction because your long run ha has to stay here. What will happen, like aggregate demand moves here and short run aggregate supply moves up, your long which run it, 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 your long run would move. Yeah, sure. yeah. okay, and then it would minimize the effect of that gap too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, let's just say right here, inflation goes up, right? right? And so then the employers are like, oh no, we need to give people raises so that they give raises, so their profits decline, so that short run aggregate supply moves to the left, it closes that gap, which then we get a new long run. Okay, how do y'all feel? Um, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. So, which one is that one the same as the negative demand shock? Yes, shock? yes. Okay. And the reason why I don't use the negative supply shock is because that is, it takes us into a recession. For us to get inflation, it's people with too many dollars with chasing too few goods, okay? How do y'all feel about this? I would give y'all, I was gonna give y'all the homework